What's up, metal and heavy music fans? These are my top picks for the best Deathcore albums of 2021. Now, I gotta say that 2020 was a great year for Deathcore, and 2021 started off very strong in the first half of the year, but then petered out pretty quickly with several disappointments and only a few albums that really stuck with me. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. I'm hoping next year will be a bit stronger all the way through but let's kick things off with my lowest pick in Born of Osiris with Angel or Alien via Sumerian Records. Now even as a longtime fan of these guys going back to 2009's A Higher Place, I'll admit that this is not one of Born of Osiris' best albums. That said, I feel like it's a testament to their overall quality that even their mid-tier albums end up being some of my favorite deathcore albums each year in their catchiness. Furthermore, there's some increased experimentation with singing and melodic elements here that I quite enjoy on certain songs. But even if you just want those old chunky bangers, you still got plenty of that on White Nile, Oathbreaker, and Crossface. At 55 minutes, it's a bit overlong too, but even so, I'm never close to bored. Check out my discography tier list for more thoughts on where this fits within their larger discography. Next up, we have To the Grave with Epilogue via Unique Leader Records. <laughs> Speaking of long albums, this is actually a massive expansion of their 2019 release, Global Warming, adding seven new songs on top of remixed and remastered versions of the old ones. The result is pretty impressive in that a whopping 19 tracks clocking in at over an hour is generally a bad idea even in more complex genres, much less deathcore. Boring. But thanks to a good amount of variety and standout moments, To the Grave kept me engaged all the way through this one. <laughs> The track Wreck was one of the first that sold me on this album with its mathy guitars, but there are plenty of other bangers in the likes of Ecocide, Hellhole, Kill Shelter, and Terrorist Threat. From here, I'd recommend that To The Grave scale the runtime back moving forwards, but if they continue to step up these same songwriting elements, I can't wait to hear where it leads them next. Then a shout out here for Lorna Shore's new EP, And I Return To Nothingness. At just three tracks, I feel like this one is a little short to fully make the list, and I felt like it was a little oversold with all of the glowing reviews. But that said, it was still a very solid outing for a group that was on the ropes, and those sickening vocal moments alone make me excited to hear what comes out after this one. <laughs> Then going all the way back to the beginning of the year, we have Humanity's Last Breath with Vilde via Unique Leader Records. This was actually the first review I dropped this year, and it still holds strong in the genre now 11 months later. I really didn't have the highest expectations going in given that I found the critically lauded Abyssal to be pretty inconsistent, but where that album just did okay, Velde absolutely crushes it on all fronts. From the massive atmosphere expanded further by the symphonic elements to the gigantic waves of crushing distortion, the entire album is like a storm from those 90s and 2000s disaster films. I gotta go, Julia, we got cows! Leveling everything in its wake. Alright, getting higher up the list here, we have Darko with Darko. Made up of vocalist Tom Barber of Chelsea Grin and formerly Lorna Shore, and drummer Josh Miller of Immure, this new project really knocked my socks off with their first full length. I'm admittedly not even a big fan of any of those projects, but what they've managed to put together here, at least in my opinion, blows all of that stuff out of the water. With a seemingly endless supply of bangers like The Last of Us, Insects, and especially Mars Attacks, these inhuman guitar parts and vocals will absolutely destroy you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
It's a relatively simple formula, but a very effective one. Chaotic, syncopated guitars with a little of that frontier energy, glitchy rhythms akin to Born of Osiris, and of course an impressive display of verbal acrobatics from Tom. I'm only upset that I missed out on a physical copy as pre-orders sold out within mere hours. And then of course we have Brand of Sacrifice with Lifeblood. <laughs> I've made a conscious effort to not talk as much about this album over the past few months because when it dropped I could not shut up about it for weeks later. But it's for good reason because since that time this album has still not been dethroned as my favorite of the year. From the insanely infectious grooves to the catchy symphonic flourishes, what's not to love? <laughs> Honestly, I have talked about this album enough in my original review and list after list entry to the point that even my own audience was asking me in the kindest ways to shut up about it. Stop it. Get some help. In short, this is some of the most fun you will have with a deathcore album this year, period. Let me know your favorite deathcore albums this year down in the comments, click here for more deathcore related content, and stick around for more of my favorite albums by genre. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.